Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Shora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture we will study about rotor design for single phase induction motor. In previous lecture we have studied about stator design for single phase induction motor. In this video lecture we will study step by step procedure for rotor design. In case of single phase induction motor, the rotor construction as we know that it is always a square cage type of rotor. So let us see what in this video lecture we will be going to study. Number of rotor slots, area of rotor bar, area of end ring, width of the rotor teeth, depth of the rotor core and the rotor resistance. Now let us start with the number of rotor slots. In previous lecture we have studied how to decide number of stator slots. So if number of stator slots are decided then accordingly we have to choose number of rotor slots. We have a certain combination which gives very less harmonics and we have to select such a combination that there is a no noise producing combination and the noise produce because of certain harmonics. So we have to avoid such combination normally either 20% less or more number of slots compared to stator slots in case of rotor is selected. But we will see certain uh, rules, then uh, we can have a best possible uh, suitable rotor slot, uh, uh, slot combination. For the motor with more than two poles, quite operation is expected. And we have certain rules. The number of rotor slots are divisible by number of pair of poles. The number of rotor slots differs from the number of stator slots by more than the number of poles. These are certain rules if we follow then we have we can expect quiet operation without any noise. The number of rotor slots is equal to number of stator slots plus twice the number of poles. The number of rotor slot is rarely more than 1.5 times the number of stator slots. This is very important. We normally go 20% more or less as I said earlier. And while deciding the proper combination of rotor and stator slots, we have to consider magnetic locking and cusp in the producing torque. Harmonic poles due to slots and we have one equation that is equal to 2 into S plus minus P by 2. P by 2 is pair of pole and S that is number of slots. Quite running motor will result if there are no harmonic fields of rotor and stator slots with number of poles differing by less than 4. So if we follow this type of uh, rules and uh, we go for best possible combination then we have always a quieter uh, operation in case of uh, single phase induction motor. Then let us select or rather calculate area of rotor bar. Total copper section in main winding. We know that uh, uh, with one equation we can show that total copper section in main winding that is uh, total cross sectional area of copper in main winding and that is indicated by AM. So by this equation we can indicate this AM that is a area of copper section in main winding and that is indicated by 2 times tons total tons of the main winding. So that is total conductor actually and multiplied by cross section area of each conductor that is a small AM. So with this equation we can say that uh, total copper section of main winding. Same way we have total cross section of the rotor bar and we have equation AR 
capital A that is cross section area of rotor R for rotor that is uh, SR multiplied by AB in millimeter square SR that is uh, total number of rotor slots in previous slide we have seen that how to decide number of rotor slots so once number of rotor slots are decided so it is a product of uh, number of rotor slots and cross section area of the each rotor bar where uh, TM that is uh, as I said number of turns of the main winding AM that is cross section area of main winding conductor and AB that is cross section area of each bar we have one bar in each slot so now we take a ratio normally for a commercial type of a fractional horsepower single phase induction motor we follow this ratio that uh, AR to AM ratio of copper section or total cross sectional copper section in rotor to main winding or stator and that ratio is taken as a 0.5 to 0.8 if we use copper or that ratio AR to AM that can be taken as a 1 to 1.6 if we use aluminum we have lot of advantage if we go for copper but uh, in case of single phase induction motor normally cost is uh, more significant so normally manufacturer will go for aluminum and if we go for cast rotor then uh, we have certain advantage we can avoid the joints between uh, rotor bars and uh, end ring and uh, cast aluminum so accordingly we have to choose this ratio to decide the area of rotor bar once based on AM area of cross section area of uh, main or stator copper area we can select the total cross section copper area of the rotor and uh, based on the equation SR multiplied by AB we can have area of each in, uh, individual rotor bar so now let us calculate area of end ring we have an equation for end ring current and that is a IE I and suffix E we use for end ring current that is equal to SR divided by pi P multiplied by IB where SR that is a number of rotor slots P number of poles and IB that is current through each rotor bar we have very uh, previously we have derived this equation for rendering current and let us call it equation number one then area of each rendering that is AE small a and suffix E for area of uh, entering and we know that area that is current divided by density we have always area so IE divided by delta E and delta E that is a density of the entering current let us substitute value of IE from equation number one to area of the entering and therefore equation for area of entering becomes now 1 upon delta E that is as per the previous equation and uh, instead of IE we have introduced uh, this part that is SR divided by pi P and uh, multiplied by IB and let us call it equation number 2 now again area of each bar similar equation we can use for area of each bar that is AB small a that is for area and B for bar and that is the uh, current divided by density again but now in this uh, this time we have taken IB that is the uh, current through the each bar and delta B that is current density in the current uh, passing through the uh, rotor bar current in each bar that is IB and from this equation it becomes product of AB multiplied by delta B and let us substitute value of current IB into equation number 2 and then our equation for area of entering 
it becomes like this 1 upon delta e sr divided by pi p and for current ib we have introduced this part so ab multiplied by delta b if we simplify the equation 1 upon pi that is 0.32 ar that is a copper cross section area of the rotor that is sr multiplied by ab so it is ar and divided by b we have taken this ratio of current density delta b to delta e where delta b and delta e that is current density in bar and end ring respectively let us consider now that current density in a rotor bar as well as in end ring that is a normally considered equal so delta b is equal to delta e if we consider this then equation for area of end ring becomes 0.32 multiplied by ar that is a copper cross sectional area of the rotor and divided by p so with this equation we can able to calculate area of the end ring so we have calculated area of rotor bar and area of end ring and now rotor resistance in case of a single piece induction motor the rotor resistance is very important because it decide the amount of starting torque so rotor resistance normally it should be selected as low as possible and uh, we have a certain advantage that uh, it will reduce the rotor losses and high efficiency so because of less rotor losses we have high efficiency high full uh, full load speed and minimum temperature rise so these are advantage of the selecting low value of rotor resistance but at the same time if we go for a higher value of rotor resistance then we know that in case of single phase induction motor rotor resistance affect the maximum torque so maximum torque and uh, we have a higher value of pull out torque and higher starting torque so the value of rotor resistance can be decided based on the requirement of the starting torque if we require higher starting torque then we have to go for higher rotor resistance and accordingly but this ratio is very important we, uh, uh, it is very significant and ratio is r rm ds divided by xlm for commercial split phase motor the ratio is selected between 0.45 to 0.55 and for capacitor start motor the ratio can be selected as 0.45 to 0.8 where r rm dash that is the resistance of a rotor referred to main winding and xlm that is the leakage reactance of stator main winding plus the rotor in terms of main winding so this ratio is very important uh, while deciding the rotor resistance and uh, ultimately it depends on the requirement of the starting torque now uh, rotor teeth we always know that uh, flux density can be given by the equation that is flux divided by area and the same way rotor teeth flux density it can be given as b t r t for teeth and r for rotor and it can be given by flux 5m divided by number of rotor slots per pole that is sr divided by p and li that is our net iron length and wtr that is the width of the rotor teeth where p is number of pole sr that is number of rotor slots li that is net iron length and wtr that is width of the rotor teeth now if we select appropriate value of uh, flux density in teeth then we can easily able to calculate the uh, value of uh, width of the rotor teeth and uh, this can be given by the similar equation 
where uh, flux density (Vtr) it can be chosen between 1.5 to 1.7 Weber per meter square. It can be selected in accordance with the same flux densities we have selected in stator side, but some a slightly higher flux density can be considered in rotor because in a normal running condition the frequency of a rotor current is very less so higher flux density can be considered so width of the rotor teeth can be calculated with this equation and same way we have a rotor core we know that flux passing through the rotor core that is a half of the uh, main flux and rotor core flux density that is B C R C for core and R for rotor so that can be given by this equation 5m divided by 2 and divided by area that is Li multiplied by D C R where D C R that is the depth of the rotor core and uh, if the rotor core flux density that is normally 1.4 to 1.5 Weber per meter square. If it is appropriately selected or chosen, then uh, depth of the rotor core can be easily calculated with this equation. Where DCR, as I said, that is the depth of the rotor core. So, I must stop here. It is all about uh, single phase uh, induction motor and uh, rotor design. So, thank you for watching my video. Keep watching. Thank you very much.